Welcome to the Orthodontics and Summary Podcast, where Farouk brings you the key points and understanding of orthodontic webinars, conferences, and papers in a concise podcast with your host, Farouk. Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today's lecture is entitled My Rules in Orthodontic Practice by Muhammad al Muzian. This is going to be a two part episode where Muhammad goes through 32 tips of his clinical practice. In this episode, we're going to be looking at knowledge and confidence, space requirements and creation of space, expansion and treatment planning. To start with, Muhammad spoke about the Kruger curve. So this is a relationship between our confidence versus our knowledge in the field and how this changes through our careers. We start off perhaps overconfident with little knowledge. We go through an experience of reducing our confidence and increasing our knowledge. And at the end, we reach harmony. Next, Muhammad spoke about the visa and how the visa is the requirements to do something and enter clinical practice. And that is taking the medical history of our patients, the dental history, looking at the trauma and looking at other pathologies. Next, looking at space assessment and curation. So he has an acronym here and he uses T-Scooter. Let me explain what that is. So the T in T-Scooter stands for talk requirements, the S stands for SPI or curve of SPI, the C stands for crowding, the O stands for overjet, T stands for tooth size discrepancy, A for angulation and R for rotation. This went hand in hand with what we need to do to create space and there's an acronym for this as well which is SPIDAR and SPIDAR to break it down the S stands for stripping, the P stands for proclination, The first E stands for extraction. The second E is for expansion. The D is for distalization. A is for angulation. And R, again, is for rotation. Muhammad then went on to speak about IPR and stated the maximum IPR we can do is 0.75 millimeters per tooth. That is the golden rule. But he said that depends on the shape and size of the tooth. And we can achieve up to four to six millimeters sometimes. But he mentioned it was sometimes. We need to balance that with avoiding creating a very large tooth size discrepancy. Next, he had a few pearls and I've grouped them all into one. And it looks at the inclination changes. So what we know is that two millimeters of crowding results in five degrees of proclination, which equals to one millimeter of change for both the overjet, so the anterior posterior change, but also one millimeter of change to the overbite will reduce our overbite by the same of one millimeter. And of course, there's the inverse. So if we have two millimeters of space and we're going to close that space, it's five degrees of retroclination for this two millimeters, which equals one millimeter of change to the overjet reduction of it. And also one millimeter of reduction to uh, one millimeter of increase to the overbite. This is supported by a number of publications by Eberhardt, by Hobb, by Cooper, and by Aziz in 2011. He described how all cases can be retroclined or proclined by five degrees, and it won't significantly affect the periodontal ligaments. So may accept 10 degrees. However, this time it comes with certain caveats having a good gingival biotype, a thick symphysis, no recession, and no periodontal problems. He mentioned about the golden rules when it comes to changing inclination, not to procline the uppers more than 120 degrees, and not to retrocline the lowers by 80 degrees. He then went on to expansion, and he mentioned how you cannot expand the dental alveola in the lower arch, except in the circumstances of a class 2 division 2 case and the canines are lingually trapped. He mentioned how expansion in the upper arch provides us with a maximum of 0.5 millimetres of space for every 1 millimetre of expansion. But he also explained why we get this discrepancy and he mentioned that it's to do with the backwards movement of the anterior teeth into that space that's created. So we can only utilise half the amount of space of expansion. After expansion, it's better to use a wire retainer in our Essex retainer to reinforce the expansion that we've had. He then went on to his tips with RME. He spoke about how he likes to use the bonded design and likes to have a large hole and actually the acrylic housing. 
makes it easier to remove the appliance, which can be quite t- quite bothersome. You also mentioned the hole allows you to measure the distances of expansion quite easily. And then you went on to describe the degree of expansion in the upper arch should be guided by the lower arch. However, we have to align the lower arch. And you mentioned Andrew's plane in doing this and then working back from that when it comes to the upper arch. Now, hygiene can be a real issue with RME. He spoke about the use of a monojet or a water jet with corsidor to clean under the RME. The next topic was looking at treatment planning. So he spoke about planning around the lower arch. And this is something that we are familiar with, but he explained why. He mentioned because actually it's our greatest limiting factor. We have a limitation in the labial lim- labiolingual bone that's present for the low incisors. We have more versatility in the upper arch on the opposing side of things, where we have the palatal bone, which allows us to make more changes. Now, he spoke about planning around the lower arch and what changes can we make. And he presented a new acronym, which was MOO. And I will explain MOO. It's not me going into animal sounds for the podcast. It is actually midlines, overjet, overbite and health of the periodontal ligament. And what Muhammad stated is that if e- any of these four criteria cannot be predictably maintained or corrected, then he will to carry out extractions in the lower arch. That brings us to the end of this episode. Stay tuned for part two, where we'll explore further about treatment planning, looking at other tips from Muhammad Al-Muzian. Of course, please do subscribe and look forward to the next episode.